Welcome to BTEC, this is David. This video is sponsored by Direct Mobiles. You can check out their deals at directmobiles.co.uk. The first two major flagships of 2020 will be the Samsung Galaxy S11 Plus and the Huawei P40 Pro. The rumor mill has been fired up about these devices and the latest is that the Galaxy device might not actually end up being called the Galaxy S11. Ice Universe, who is the man when it comes to Samsung leaks, recently put out a tweet that suggests that the new devices will be called the S20 series. It's a similar thing to what Huawei did with the P series phones. The model before the P20 is actually called the P10 and the one before that was the P9. At this point, we actually know quite a lot about these two devices. And just before going to publish this video, the first alleged official renders of the P40 Pro leaked, showing something that is fairly close to my renders. Although I am really surprised that they have bunched all those camera lenses so close together. So how do these two 2020 flagships stack up against each other? Well, they're very similar in many ways and quite different in others. The most obvious way that they're similar in is the looks. Both of these devices will have a rectangular camera array and house five separate cameras. Similar setup, but different specification. The Samsung S11 Plus or the Galaxy S20 Plus will be packing a 108 megapixel sensor that is said to be the largest camera sensor ever put on the back of a smartphone. The rumors are it will also have a 64 megapixel sensor that will be paired with a five times periscope style lens. The Huawei on the other hand is offering a 64 megapixel sensor for the P40 Pro which will be accompanied by a 10 times optical zoom in the periscope style. Although the zoom may be further with the Huawei, the megapixel count is much smaller at 16. The final output of the Samsung's 64 megapixel zoom sensor should be around about the same at 16 megapixels. The sensor will combine four pixels down into one and give us a 16 megapixel shot. The same should be true for its main 108 megapixel sensor, although it should combine six pixels into one, giving us a pixel pitch of way over two microns. So one of the main features of this sensor should be amazing low light. On the Huawei, at the ultra wide angle, we have a 52 megapixel sensor. Great to see such a large megapixel count going into the Huawei. I hope that is a correct rumor because I really love shooting at the ultra wide angle lens on any smartphone. For me, it gives the most dramatic kinds of shots. So it's great to see that Huawei have at least put some effort into getting the best possible shots from the wide angle camera. For video, the rumors are that the Galaxy S11 Plus or the S20 will be able to shoot at 8K resolution, which would be absolutely incredible if you ask me. With such a massive megapixel count, in theory, it should be able to do that. The Huawei is said to have a dedicated video camera type of sensor, just like the Fantastic Mate 30 Pro. Historically, Huawei flagship smartphones, whilst being fantastic at taking photos, they're not really top of the tree when it comes to video. But you can believe that as soon as these become available, we will be doing comparisons to compare the quality. But I've got a feeling that the Samsung is going to come out on top, especially if it really is capable of shooting 8K. Rumors about the front camera at the moment is that the P40 Pro will have an under display camera setup. Leaks that we've seen of the front glass of this device show no cutout or no notch of any kind. It also shows symmetry between the top and the bottom bezel. The S11 or S20 will have a central hole cut for the selfie camera, just like the Note 10 series. Another area where the Samsung will come out on top is in the processor. It will pack a Snapdragon 865 chipset compared to the P40 Pro's Kirin 990. I guess I really should put it into perspective. Both of these processors are state of the art and will be incredibly high powered. Both are built on the seven nanometer process, although the Kirin 990 has been around for a few months already now. The Snapdragon 865 will be a newer processor and will no doubt have some advantages in performance. Both of these phones will have 5G capability, although I do wonder if they will be offering a non 5G version of these phones. There's no doubt that the industry will be moving towards putting 5G chipsets in almost everything they produce. But are they making that move in 2020 or are they going to wait a little bit longer for the 5G infrastructure to become more mature? See, the thing about making a 5G and a non 5G version is that you end up with a device that's cheaper, but yet in some areas has better specs. I've got a feeling that they might not want to offer a 5G version and a non 5G version as you don't want to show up the 5G version with the non 5G specs because it is a cheaper device and you would imagine that they want the most expensive device to have top overall specs. Well, these devices are just around the corner and it seems like 2020 is going to be a really interesting year for the smartphone. We are starting the year with a 108 megapixel sensor and under the screen camera technology. Make sure that you're subbed to BTEC because as soon as these devices become available, we will have full reviews on the channel. And no doubt the best place to look for these phones is on the Direct Mobile's website. Here you can compare all of the mobile smartphone deals available all here in the one website. 
On top of that, they have over 24 years of award-winning customer service. You can check in the video description below for their link, or you can search directmobiles.co.uk. There's also a link down there for our BTEC Amazon shop. There you'll find all the best tech and accessories which are all recommended by us. It's definitely worth checking out. And that's it from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. My name's David. This is BTEC.